where do we stand right now, in your view, as this year ends up, the new mayor has yet to take office? How do we make, as a social justice movement, this issue more than just a campaign point on the new mayor's platform? Sure, I think that when we reflect back on 2013, one of the things we have to remember in terms of police accountability is that we scored victories not only in the courtroom, but also in the legislature. So the city council passed two landmark pieces of legislation to help to increase NYPD accountability. One was to create an office of the inspector general uh, to oversee the NYPD. And secondly, was to actually ban all types of discriminatory profiling by the NYPD. That in combination with Judge Shinlin's ruling um, an order for remedies gives us this tremendous opportunity to really build on the grassroots power that was developed over the past two years um, and longer in terms of the history of this issue, and to move into this next period with a mayor who is more open to the idea, certainly, of having the NYPD treat all New Yorkers with respect and dignity, and recognizing that safety doesn't have to be at the cost of respect and dignity for all people. So I think that our job as activists is to make sure that that doesn't turn into, just as you said, uh, something for a campaign, but that we maintain momentum. And I think that what we saw in the past year is that New Yorkers from all boroughs of the city are concerned about what they see as wrongful policing and policing that's counterproductive to safety. And what do you make of the lame duck mayor, Mayor Bloomberg's pushback so hard? You know, I think he's a sore loser as part of it. And maybe that's not the best thing to say, but it's really unfortunate when you've got in so many ways, New Yorkers across the political spectrum, across race, across class in New York saying that we actually need change. We need reform to this abuse and massive explosion of stop and frisk. And uh, him actually continuing to turn out NYPD propaganda, making it seem as if stop and frisk is the only thing that will keep New York safe, which there's no evidence proving that. He's never been able to point to any kind of research. And in fact, the research shows that what it does actually is alienate and criminalize entire generations of New Yorkers who will never call the cops for assistance.